I did a couple polls a week or so ago. I don't remember the exact date. Those polls had meaning, and I'm sure most of you picked up on it. But with those polls, I think I figured out the problem with new Star Wars content that has been released since the original trilogy of Star Wars Special Editions came out. If you missed those polls, the poll questions were, how old were you when you got into Star Wars? And what attracted you to Star Wars? There's been a lot of talk back and forth as to how Star Wars isn't the same, how it's changed over the years. These debates have been going on since the special edition releases of the original trilogy. It's nothing new. The biggest difference is the internet and now everyone can display their voices. Not just on Star Wars, but anything they feel passionate about. Or enough that they give a crap about that they can post their feelings on it. And that's what I'm calling this. Passionate fans discuss Star Wars, not hate or toxicity. Because those terms are being overused and can come from both sides of the argument. I've been guilty of it myself. For that, I apologize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present my thoughts on why we feel Star Wars is no longer the same and what I've figured out about it. Why we feel like we've been betrayed, not just by Disney, but by George Lucas himself as well. And it all starts with those two little polls that I did. The Star Wars polls, along with an enlightened viewer or two, have helped change the direction I was heading. So thank you. You're right, I was starting to get too deep into the negative stuff. The reason I wasn't going to do this video was because it seemed like the same path. Star Wars shouldn't be negative. I know emotions get high and we tend to lean on things we love about Star Wars and reject the things we don't love. Not just reject, but disagree with completely. But why? What makes us like certain aspects more than others? Sure, we can debate all day long as to whether the newer stuff is bad writing, bad acting, plot holes, and all the other grown-up things we tend to see from the newer Star Wars shows and movies, and other franchises as well. Maybe even the books, but I don't know. I haven't heard much criticism about the books, maybe because it's mostly the diehard fans that read them. Who knows, maybe there are criticisms just as harsh as the Star Wars series and I just don't notice. You can leave a comment down below and let me know if I'm inaccurate. Show me something different. But this isn't about the hate. This is more about why we tend to hold the things up on a pedestal that we consider original Star Wars. Now, I grew up with the original trilogy. I see it saw each of the films on opening day. Yeah. I'm that old. And to me, those are the original Star Wars. To anybody that started with the prequels, all six of the original films are the original Star Wars. But there are those who were raised on the prequel trilogy. Those who didn't get the Darth Vader reveal from The Empire Strikes Back the way we did, with a three year wait to see if Darth Vader was lying. If you were raised on the prequels and they were your very first experiences with Star Wars, then you knew going into the original trilogy that Darth Vader wasn't lying. And when you go to The Empire Strikes Back, it really wasn't a big deal when he tells Luke, I am your father. For us, that moment made that movie special. But for you in the prequel generation, it may have been that moment that Anakin turned to the dark side. You could have been yelling, don't do it, Anakin but you still probably knew what the outcome was going to be, unless you had never heard of Darth Vader at that point, which you may not have if you were only three years old, so I forgive you. I know this will scare a lot of people, but there are those being raised on the sequel trilogy now. Some that will love them because of the magic they felt as a child when they first heard raise a Palpatine, even though they may have asked, what's a Palpatine? I can't say that it'll be as deep of a love as we shared in George Lucas's vision, but there will be some there. One criticism us old farts gave the prequels was that it didn't feel like Star Wars. I'm not saying it's a fair criticism, but it's absolutely not a fair criticism. They were very much Star Wars, as much as the original trilogy was, just told a different way. 
My son and I used to argue about the prequels. To him, they were the greatest Star Wars ever told. I questioned it. Why? How? He was almost four years old when The Phantom Menace came out, so it dawned on me, almost an epiphany. So I started asking myself, how do I find out if my theory is correct about Star Wars and our love for it? And it dawned on me, take some polls. Do the same thing news outlets do during an election. And one thing that drives me insane about other YouTube channels that I've seen take polls, they never discuss the results. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll try to do it in the most positive way imaginable. The first poll was, how old were you when you got into Star Wars? And I'm pretty sure I knew what the general outcome would be. I just needed to confirm it. With 940 votes as of the making of this video, 70% of Star Wars fans said they were between the ages of three years old and eight years old when they first saw Star Wars. That's a huge number. I didn't expect it to be that high. I really didn't. The next age group was nine years old to 12 years old, which got 17%. Nowhere near the as big a number as the youngest of the younglings, but still pretty good. 8% said they were between the ages of 13 and 18 years old. 4% said they were 18 to 25 years old, and 2% said they were old as hell. That means anything over 25. I guess I'm double old as hell. I don't know. But, so to break that down, out of 100% of the people that polled, and remember, you can never go higher than 100%. I don't know how you would give 110% effort, but, <sighs> I digress. Break it down. Out of 100% of the people polled, 87% were 12 years old and younger. 95% were younger than or up to the age of 18 years old. Only 6% of you guys or anyone polled were over 18 years old. Remember, that's out of 940 people that responded. If you feel your demographic wasn't, respond, wasn't represented properly, please go back and show it to your friends so they can vote too. You can only vote once, and I couldn't vote at all. Also, once I put the poll up there, there was no way to edit it. I could only delete it. So these are real numbers. I know I'm boring you with numbers and so on, but I promise there is a payoff to this. Please stick with me. The second poll was, what attracted you to Star Wars? I won't go through all the numbers on this one, but I will say only 29% of the people polled said it was the story. The other 71% of the people were things like lightsabers, characters, visuals, ships, with the characters being the top at 41%. If it would have let me add more options, I would have. I'm sorry for those who feel disenfranchised. It really wasn't by design. Remember, these numbers are from 916 respondents on the second poll. Now, here's my epiphany. Some of the complaints to Star Wars more recent releases is that Star Wars stories have plot holes, or it isn't well written, or that the acting isn't good, or there wasn't a plan for making a trilogy. Those are fair enough arguments, and you're not wrong. But think back to your first experience with Star Wars. I don't mean how you view the movies now, but your very first experience. After all, most judgments of anything is made from your first experience of those things. When you were a child, Darth Vader is so cool. As an adult, I saw The Rise of Skywalker once and I hated it. I'll never watch it again. The story was all over the place and there was no plan. Fair enough, and again, you're not wrong in your opinion, but what you were more interested in the first time you watched A New Hope, The Phantom Menace, or Revenge of the Sith, or whatever it was, was it the story, the writing, or was it that you wanted to see more lightsaber action, or more Darth Vader or Darth Maul? Remember, 70% of you were between the ages of three years old and eight years old when you first saw Star Wars. A compelling, well-written story to you at that time was the wheels on the bus go round and round. 
It wasn't the story that got you into Star Wars. It wasn't the well-written dialogue or the believability of the whole plot. It was something that caught your eye, your senses, coolness. It was your imagination. I've said countless times, your opinions of the new stuff are not wrong. But what I challenge you to do is go back and re-watch the first Star Wars movie you have ever seen. Take away the nostalgia, take away the rose-colored glasses, take away the experience you had as a child. View it as if you are watching it for the first time. You'll see Star Wars has always had clunky dialogue, horrible acting, plot holes, and a story that was not very well planned out. Star Wars is as it always has been, made like a soap opera in space. If you don't believe me, go watch Days of Our Lives or something like that. That's what Star Wars was meant to be, and it continues to be, with all these visuals and these neat things that catches a child's eye. But it isn't made for a 25 plus year old to get into it for the first time. Otherwise, the numbers on the poll would be different. Polls don't lie, numbers don't lie. If you don't think it was made for kids in the next generations, look at the poll numbers. 87% of people that got into Star Wars were 12 years old or younger. The exact age group George Lucas intended the stories to be for. The exact age group Disney markets to with 90% of their products. There is enough adult entertainment in Star Wars to keep the adults coming back, but they are bringing their kids for the experience. We get upset that Star Wars didn't grow with our developing minds as we got into them at three years old and now we're in our 50s, 30s, 20s and Star Wars did not grow up with us. So the stories seem left behind and we're like, no, this isn't how Star Wars has always been. So when it boils down to it, Star Wars has not changed. Not one bit, we have. We rely on nostalgia and a want to get that feeling back that we had the first time we watched Star Wars, or even the second or third time as we were children. We say it doesn't feel like Star Wars. What does that mean? Well, it isn't that hard to explain anymore. After I saw the poll numbers, I started to understand it. Star Wars is supposed to feel the way it did when we were between the ages of 3 years old to 12 years old but we aren't that age anymore, yet we expect the same feeling. And the biggest problem with that is we will never get that first time feeling again. We will never get that childlike wonderment back. Instead, we can pass that feeling on to the next generations and teach them what it means to grow as a Star Wars fan. Why would we take that away from them with hate? The sooner we come to terms with who Star Wars is for and that we are the ones who have changed, the sooner we can start enjoying Star Wars again. This is Gerald from Star Wars Fanatic signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you for watching, and remember, this is the way, the only way.